Ladies and gentlemen, the time is here. I promised you, and unfortunately, I keep my promises. I, I wish I could be uh, a pathological liar like other YouTubers. However, unfortunately, I had parents. Now, Gamer Salt made a video, The Coffin of Annie and Lady, episode 2 story explained. A lot of people told me they wanted me to do, like, a dive on the, the lore of Andy and Lele. It's episode 2 or chapter 2 or whatever. I don't even know if you need chapter 1. I know very little. Uh, I will give you a, a quick recap on episode 1. Episode 1, indie game, incredibly edgy. Andy and Lele trapped in a house. They're suffering and starving. Eventually, they manage to break into their neighbor's house and literally catch him in the middle of summoning a demon where they kill and eat him. Um... Because they're hungry and stuff. Now, they're being locked in the house because basically they're in, like, a, a China-type vibe setting and they're being harvested. I think for organs, they made it sound like it's for their blood types. I don't know. It's creepy. It's scary. There's, there's all sorts of shit. And the relationship between these siblings is... Uh, these are siblings, okay? See how he's touching your, their siblings, okay? This dude's kind of a, a weird pushover that's easily manipulated, and she is every psycho fuck in the world. She is like, you can't fix her, bro. You can't fix her. Now, I originally heard of this because um, it got so much hate on Twitter just because it's, I guess, adult themed, even and, and it's twisted and it's fucking dark, and it got an insane amount of hate on Twitter. The creator got doxxed. Anyone that supported this stuff actually got just blasted by the masses. And it's sad that we're living in a timeline where anything just dark and gross gets hate. Like, no one's forcing you to consume it. But there's also no reason to actually get crazy. So, let's jump right into it. Let's see what we got, the baby. The strange story of Andy and Lele, the cannibalistic murderer siblings, begins after leaving their captivity from the apartment complex where... All right, dude, I, I, I was told that chapter two is even crazier than chapter one. I was told that chapter two makes chapter one look like a uh, sunshine, rainbows and lollipops. I'm a little scared, I'm not gonna lie. They were abandoned by their parents. The whole reason for their imprisonment was passed as an elaborate plan for quarantine after a mysterious contagious deadly disease. However, according to their investigation, the apartment complex contained many people in the apartments with their blood type information written on their doors. Which is scary as hell. They're basically used uh, to, to be farmed for their blood. And since they have more common blood types, they were given less food because ultimately they don't really need them as badly. Having detailed information about each captive, each individual was treated differently based on how universal their blood type was. The ones who were widely donors were treated much better compared to the counterpart who were even deprived of necessities such as food, hygiene products, Bruh. and much more. Their like a actual terrible stuff. Honestly insane. For it seems as if the building contained his subjects whom they wanted to harvest organs from. The duo managed to escape Yeah, their that's present. what I've been saying. Every time I say the harvesting organs thing, people say, like, that's not confirmed, that's not confirmed. Bro, it's all but confirmed, I think. Because for the government to actually do this, and for the parents of these kids to sign them up so the government could do this, holy shit, what kind of messed up, twisted, butt-fucking harvest? Dude, I'm telling you, every time the word harvest is mentioned, it's traumatic. There is no setting anymore in the modern era that the word harvest is not terrifying. I, I will I will stand by this claim until my dying day. Until my last day. The word harvest is scary as crap, bro. It is. They're ringing. Finally, the harvest can commence. You see what I'm saying, bro? You see what I'm saying? The word harvest... It's just always scary, bro. Meant killing some people on their way, getting on the local bus, and going to the nearest town, which reveals there is no. Right, so th this is new. The way it ended in the last, uh, in the first chapter, is they actually escaped from this captivity, this captive environment. Contagious pandemic, which requires a quarantine, and the people in the apartment complex were simply keeping them captive to run experiments and harvest their organs. Being in a cheap motel room, left with pennies to their name, not knowing how they will manage surviving in this large new world, Ashley goes on her taunting and tormenting routine yet again on Ashley. Bro, Ashley out here, actually insane. Bro, so scary. Sky Knight, thanks for the sub. 
Dude, every time Ashley does anything, it's like there there are so many layers to this manipulative little bitch. And true, calling him Andy over and over again, which triggers him. Bro, Andy, bro, dude, there's simply, no, it's not gonna get crazier, right? Um, Ashley yet again has her weird lip biting, too close for comfort, touchy feely approach with her brother Andrew, oh, which is at God. first questionable and at worst, well. They tune into the At worst, well, it's Wincest. The TV to see if they hear anything about the building that they just escaped from, which reports on the quarantined building being burnt, which confuses them, dismissing what? it. What? Nothing major, just a fire that burnt the whole place down, everyone died? That's not what happened. Is this like a cover up? What? As a blessing, something that would destroy any evidence of them running away and killing. However, this. Whoa, whoa, this is crazy. Like, what, what's it, what I love about the Andy and Lele story so far, um, because as you know, I just love lore. Any game that has lore that I, I just need to know it. I need to absorb it. It's that the, the darker and more cursed and twisted it is, dude, I am there for it. Th what's really so scary about this is even, you think that the horror is the fact that Lele is just an absolute psycho bitch, but it's the fact that, you don't know who the bad guys are. The parents, probably. The government, possibly. This corporation, if are they tied to get to the government in this scenario? Or is the government turning a blind eye? It's just fascinating. This deepens the story that maybe the government is in on it as well, funding these buildings which harvest organs at best, if not something much more sinister. And it turns out that they are destroying any evidence of them committing such heinous crimes by burning the entire place down. As it seems, they are lying to the public that it indeed is a building facilitating support to the patients. Insane. Insane. Like, you gotta wonder the levels of conspiracy this actually is. The levels and layers of conspiracy you have here, right? That's crazy. Yeah, I'm so happy I did part one of this a little bit ago. Like, who's the bad guy? The sister? There's demon summoning? The... That shit? Who have contracted the mysterious disease. Whilst... Not gonna lie, human experimentation would boost medicine... F what?! Oh my god. Chad, what is wrong with you? Sleeping, Ashley has a dream which acts as a premonition. That oh, that's right. So, Ashley, um, after summoning a demon in the first chapter, now the demon told her that she will start seeing premonitions in her dreams. That someone will break in and kill them. She He's not wrong, though. I mean, I guess technically not, but... Does that mean that, oh, Andy and Lele, bro, it just makes sense. I mean, <laughs> it's true, so like... Takes Andrew out of the motel and they wait outside, waiting to see if the premonition would indeed come true. Waiting outside for a while, they see a hooded man passing them, not oh. being the same person Ashley saw in her vision. That's scary. Which instead reminds them of the demon summoning neighbor that they consumed in the first... That they consumed. Man really said it in the nicest way possible. The way and and detail that went into grinding him up and cooking him up and eating him was absolutely appalling. Chapter. Andrew carefully and quietly goes after the cultist, infiltrating the summoning in the building, where he notices what amateurs they truly are, not cut out for this type of ritual. With them one- Oh my god, dude, there's a whole freaking cult? They just casually walk into a cult? What? Seem to experience something thrilling, being part of the cult more for the coffee and free cakes than anything else. Seeing that True based thing interesting, Andrew leaves to get back to Ashley. Andrew catching up to Ashley explains the cultist club were amateurs and couldn't summon anything. And <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> they're just sitting there and they're like, those cultists, amateur Satanists, bro. Those Satanists can't freaking summon anybody, bro! We summon demons on our first try! These guys are losers! And Ashley explains no one showed up on her side either. Just when she is disappointed and wanting to head back, they see a mysterious black car pull up, being the same person from her Ooh, vision. Ooh, it's they quite wrong! Why is they quite in this game? Up being the same person from her vision, there to kill them. It turns out the piece of item that the demon gave Ashley in the first chapter did in 
fact give her the ability of seeing the future through visions to save their lives. Ooh. Going to their room, Ashley contemplates on who this mysterious person is, who clearly is there after them, tracking them to kill them. Could it be possible he is from the organization that trapped him in the building? The like, you don't know? There, there are just too many, like, weird, undefined motives about, right? There, there's so many motives that we just don't understand. It's kind of crazy powerful organization that controls even the media. Ashley, being a psychotic mastermind, explains in detail what they should do in order. The, the only person that actually knows what to do in a situation where people have unclear motives. See, for me, um, the best way to predict what's happening or to know what to do or what other people are doing is to know what people want, right? If you know what people want, you can more or less predict what they do. If you know what people want, that's fine. The issue with this whole Andy and Lele world is that there are so many unclear motives. You don't know why the parents left them in that house. You don't know if that house is run by the government or if they're just completely operating outside the law. You have no idea what these Satanist cultists people are doing, right? It's like this whole Danganronpa shit where you can't predict anything. But there you got Lele, an absolute psychopath. Again, completely unpredictable. She's gonna tell you what to do. Like this, I think that it goes to show like the darkness of humanity to such an insane degree. And it's why I like this story. It's because of the unpredictability of it all. They're to fend themselves off and kill the perpetrator as no matter what, even if they escape. Can't believe the user was doxxed on, the, the creator was doxxed for, for this shit. Dude, if it makes you uncomfortable, don't play the fucking game. They will come after them until they, will come. they are dead. The plan is to go to the motel and lure. But little did they know. They were actually on Epstein's island. Killer out, who is possibly hiding in the closet as he wants to do a quick and quiet job without raising any unwanted attention. In the motel room, they would pretend that they're going out for a snack, going through the oh. local park. Okay. In there, they would hide somewhere and ambush the hitman, killing him with the gun that they took from a guard that they killed in the building. That Brother! That's some psycho plan! They don't even know if this dude's following them. They don't know if this dude's chasing them or anything. She's just, all right, we'll rent a hotel room. We'll stay in the hotel room. We'll go out the back door. We'll wait in a closet to see if someone tries to come kill us. If they do, we'll just kill them first. It's like so logical when she puts it that way. But at the same time, how did this pop into your head so quickly? That they were quarantined then. Just then, everything going to plan. The hitman also hides somewhere in the park, seemingly knowing what the plan is. Just then, Ashley being the criminal mastermind that she Yes, commands Andrew like a puppet to take the gun and claim the hitman's life himself. It's crazy how manipulative she is. It's like when you see this, when you're playing this game and you see her telling Andrew what to do, you're like, come on, Andrew, don't be a pushover. But, but sometimes people just get manipulated. That's just life. Like, right? They're siblings. They're in this together. Uh, they, they have so, so much past traumas that they've shared. And I get why he feels like he has no choice. She is the only person in the world that he does sort of trust, despite the fact that he can't trust her even a little bit, because she's undergone what he went through. Self. She then pretends it's as a- Oh, you dirty boy, no, we can't do it, bro. She thinks she's Aizen. Dude, she- What I think really struck me about this story the most is the fact that they did such a good job encapsulating a manipulative relationship. If she's fooling around with Andrew, running into another bush, distracting and tricking the hitman that they are hiding, not because they know that there's a hitman, but because they are fooling around. Using this tactic, Andrew uses the gun on him and Sam. Dude! She forces him into it! She literally forces him into it! She hides in the park for the hitman. The hitman also is hiding, so to lure him out, she makes believe she's having sex with her brother so that the hitman could think that they aren't actually they're just doing you know illegal sexual activity instead of actually knowing that he's there to lull him into a false sense of security to make him come so that andy has to shoot him like what kind of insane manipulation is that bro lele out here thinks she's illuminati they leave the corpse of the hitman behind, taking his car keys, getting in the car with an envelope, confirming that he was hired to kill Ashley and Andrew. Not We're extremely grateful. Blah. The car with an envelope, confirming that he was hired to kill Ashley. We're extremely grateful. 
that you've accepted to clean our laundry for us. Lee and Andrew, not contemplating on who is after them too much. They plan to pay their- Dude, she is so chill. Like, why is she so chill about all of this? Parents a visit and rob them, stealing as much money as they can to live off it for the time being. Go rob your own parents instead of actually question anything? It, it's, it's insane because these people have undergone so much. Like, on, on the one hand, yes, you had a backstory where Lele uh, caused someone's death as a child, right? She's obviously a psychopath. But at the same time, not knowing that backstory, is she really that unjustified now? She wants to rob her parents, okay? Her parents locked her in a, in a facility to harvest her organs, okay? She, uh, she murdered this, this hitman. This hitman was coming to him, kill you. I hate to say it, but self-defense is incredibly based. At the end of the day, all the things that she's kind of doing are just things that she needs to do to survive. And, like, you could kind of get it. And that's what's so crazy and terrifying. Because once you feel like you can understand someone, then they can, they can manipulate you. Ashley is still resentful for them being abandoned by their parents. She even plans on killing them, especially as she has a dark heart and showed what a menace without remorse she truly is in episode number one. Crazy. Andrew disagrees, only wanting to get some money. It's like with a zombie apocalypse, she was always evil, just needed the excuse. Honestly. Money from them breaking in when they aren't home. After but in a zombie apocalypse, wouldn't you rather have some kind of crazy psycho bitch on your side? Like, let's be real here. <laughs> let's be real here. Getting annoyed at Andrew for whatever reason. She Dude, why does she do that? She, like, she twists this man's brain. Dude, she's got his dick wrapped around her pinky. They're siblings. Yeah, this, 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 this story's weird as crap, all right? I'm not gonna make believe it's not, but oh my god, she's so manipulative. She falls asleep. I can fix her. Awakening in the demon's realm. The demon that she called upon and summoned oh, in episode. Oh, shit. Demon realm, demon realm. It's crazy how many layers there are to this story. Like they did not need to have the whole demon part of the story and it would have been the same fucking thing. Number one, the demon indicates that the trinket that it gave Ashley to see the future has run out of energy and every time she okay. uses it, it needs to be recharged. For that, she needs to offer a new human soul. It's just adding an extra layer of darkness and depravity to an already incredibly depraved story. I get it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. To the demon in return. She considers giving the souls of her parents to the demon, yes! thinking what Andrew might think of it when the demon disappears with Ashley awakening in her own reality. Andrew seems quite worried, having Ashley sleeping on his lap, saying how he was about to take her to the hospital. Oh my god! Hospital at Brother, no, they don't have to do this! As it's been a while. Why is he playing with her hair? No, no, come on, bro, don't do it! He low-key apologizes, seeming like he enjoys the attention. I don't know, bro. Twincest is wincest? Oh my god, stop it! That he's getting from Ashley as well. Into the twisted, unorthodox, questionable sibling relationship that they have. Parking in a local park. Dude, why is it that when I'm watching this, the murder and the cannibalism is literally the most sensible and normal part of the story? Like, that... That's sending me right now. For free, they walk the rest of the way, arriving in the new neighborhood of their parents that they recently moved into. Despite the mother telling Ashley to never call again, she told Andrew over the phone when they still communicated that they are in a new neighborhood, with Andrew still remembering, managing to track the place down. God damn. Finding out which house it is becomes really easy, as they even have nameplates on the doors. Well, that makes it a lot easier. Go to the garden, seeing how large and beautiful the house truly is. Suspicious to how- Dude, their parents have like this beautiful, massive, glorious house. A gorgeous house. A veritable palace. And they freaking sold off their kids to be enslaved organ donors? God damn, bro, this is twisted. Oh my god. Oh, they would afford something like this. Entering the house- Unless that's how they afforded the house. Unless- that's how they afforded this rich place. By literally selling their children to Jeffrey Epstein equivalent of indie games. And looking for cash and jewelry, they find a document from three months ago being death certificates of Ashley and Andrew Graves. Yo! Way before the supposed fire burning the building. This is despite Ashley calling a few weeks before with the mother telling her off not to call anymore. Which depicts the parents were probably in on it too, selling their children. Brother... I mean, I've, again, I've been predicting this since the first episode. But oh my god, dude! 
the parents know they're alive and would rather them stay fake dead. Oh my god, dude. And you wonder why Ashley's a total psychopath. ...ran to this evil organization, and hence why they received such high compensation buying this property a few months ago. Just then, they hear the main door open with none other than their mother oh. coming in. Although Ashley is cautious and... It's a shame you wasted our bullets. Bro, what? ...untrusting of their parents, Andrew like a little child rushes towards the mother, happy that she's home, and that they can finally see uh -oh. her, expecting... Damn, mom's kinda bad, not gonna lie, what the... Just, I'm just saying, why are the character designs so good? ...to be embraced by her. The mother, on the other hand, is less than... Oh my god, she thinks her kids are dead, she sees them, what are you doing here, is her reaction, what the fuck... ...and accommodating, surprised that she's seen her son home, unhappy that he's here, interrogating him why he's here. He simply explains that he's happy to see her and that the door was open, hence why they came in, wanting to visit their parents. Although she asks about the quarantine, he dismisses her question by offering her coffee. She then says that Dude, what is even going on here? What is this dynamic? What is this relationship? she wants to wash her face with Ashley asking Andrew what he's doing to which he replies that he's dude Ashley just wrote them off already Ashley's like are you trying to be nice here bro we will kill them thanks for the bit Sonic oh my god acting and he's not so stupid not realizing that the parents had a hand in their pretentious quarantine yeah because again remember this is Andy's character Andy had a really hard time thinking for himself at all just purely because Ashley is out here manipulating and controlling his whole life. He has never lived a life not being pushed and prodded into his decisions by his manipulative parents or sister. Andrew is a is the primary victim of this story. Andrew has killed two or three people already, and he is the main victim in this entire story. Just a subject of humi manipulation and humiliation and starvation and the harvest. So stupid not realizing that the parents had a hand in their pretentious quarantine. Sitting at the dining table, drinking some coffee, Andrew lies that as there was a fire, they cleared Andrew and Ashley as they didn't have any parasites. The mother is cut off guard, clear that she had a hand in their wrong imprisonment. She then deflects a question about how they afforded this house, with their conversation continuing on for a while. Dog. That's when she says that the father is arriving soon and she should get going to make some food. Her and I love how Andrew's just gonna let her get away with it because he wants to avoid conflict. He just wants a home. He wants to be loved. He wants freedom. And he's being taunted by parents that make believe they love him but don't. By a sister that makes believe she loves him. Dude, insane way of telling them to leave but of course andrew wanting to get to the bottom of it all says that she can rest as he will make food as he wants to see the father as well the mother's <laughs> i'll make food hey sis remember last time i cooked my ingredients were the neighbor <laughs> Still pretending, lets out a big sigh, being annoyed, not wanting their twisted misdeeds be revealed, letting Andrew cook. While cooking with them, they let him cook! They're gone. Ashley explains to Andrew that she needs souls to re energize her trinket, to which Andrew says that he needs to think about it, whether they want the parents to die. After some time. Oh my god, she doesn't care about them a little. Like, not. Not only. She doesn't even care. Or hate them enough to kill them. She just wants to kill them to power up her trinket. Oh my god, dude. Time, the father also arrives, not looking very happy to see his children. Soon after finishing dinner, not even paying attention to what Andrew and Ashley say, the father says that he's exhausted. Sorry, kids, I'm exhausted. These are kids you thought were killed in a fire in an organ donating, harvesting fucking complex? Oh my god. Dude. ...and needs to wake up early. Not at all one bit happy that his children are alive and here to see them. The mother follows him, ordering the children to clean up, leaving them behind. Andrew and Ashley then discuss uh -oh. killing the parents, to which Andrew refuses, saying that they cannot do that, especially as it would directly put- <sighs> Dude, look at that face. You're right! Dude, dude, look at which this. Andrew refuses, saying that they cannot do that. Look at this! Look at the character design! Look how much personality gets across with an expression. You're right. 
She does not think that even a little bit. It's like, you're right. I came up with an even more sinister and evil plan. Especially as it would directly put them as prime suspects. Even though they have been declared dead, the organization knows the truth fully. Especially I really don't like Andrew. I'm sorry to hear that. As they sent a hitman to... Because Andrew is all you'll get? What the fuck? finish the job. That's when the mother quietly comes to the kitchen observing Andrew having his hand in Ashley's back pocket being What the frick bro? Oh my god dude send them back to the organ harvesting complex homie. Put them right back. There is no scenario where this ends well. Put them away dog inappropriately touchy feeling when she explains that they need to leave the place as they are already in their 20s but they can't stay for a night being too dude they, the mom after selling them off tells them guys you can't stay here you have to leave generous to them it appears she knows about andrew and ashley's inappropriate supposed as well ordering them to sleep separately and find different places when they leave the house dude, so and imagine if mom needing to tell her two 20 year old kids you have to sleep in other rooms what the fuck bro dude andrew out here wanting to protect his sister no one's touching my sister except for me Andrew goes on to sleep on the couch, and Ashley goes on to sleep in the basement. The mother shouts orders at them to go to bed right now, or she would kick them out, when they have no other option but to go to sleep. In his dreams, Andrew is hunted by the memories of the cultist neighbor that they consumed in the apartment complex. Dude, man is traumatized as shit. Dude, poor Andrew. This guy's the most tragic character I've ever seen. I feel like everyone watching or talking about this game is just talking about how Lele is insane. And she is. Um, she's fucking crazy. She's a demented, twisted little bitch. But no one talks about the actual tragedy that is Andrew's storyline. Like, imagine being this manipulated. They were in, alongside other past memories. In there, he has vivid memories of his ex-girlfriend, Julia, who told him in a very polite and nice manner, maybe it's better for Ashley to get her own independence as Andrew keeps yeah. on canceling and leaving early just to be with his sister, Ashley. Of course, this is a... Dude, he had like the most wholesome girlfriend in the world that Ashley just scared off. Nice way to ask his relationship with Ashley is inappropriate and she should have her own life rather than clinging onto Andrew. Seeing how he killed the ward, the woman in the building and the hitman, he has no regrets as they were all bad and caused danger. See, that's, that's the thing. He has no regrets even though he's been pushed into everything in his life. Man did not have one normal day or make one normal decision that wasn't forced upon him to survive. He did all that to defend himself. Even though ultimately that's not true, right? She, uh, he helped Ashley trap the kid in the box in their, in their past and cause her to die, right? He, by listening to Ashley, is making bad decisions, but he is convincing himself that he's not doing anything wrong. Bro! And Ashley. But there remains one person who died innocently. Yeah, the that person kid in their childhood. And is Nina, who Ashley, in a menacing way, ordered and manipulated Andrew to lock in a chest in a dusty place, who died after being locked there for hours on end, suffocating a child whom they killed when they were kids themselves. And all that because Ashley was jealous of Nina liking her brother Andrew. In this twisted memory... Yeah, th Ashley's absolutely insane, and she has no remorse for any of this. She... Dude, and, and here's the thing, just looking at, trying to look at this from Andrew's perspective, I could see why he's so twisted. Like, you see why he's forced into these situations. Sorry, Ashley and Andrew bury this m Obviously, it's his own fault, but dude, man was manipulated to shit. Small corpse of Nina and the woods, with Ashley gaslighting Andrew that she will tell- Let's just hide it then? They hit it? On him if he finds any other friends and if he doesn't do what she wants. If you don't do what I want or if you find any friends, I'll kill them. Just kidding! Wait, what? We'll tell on him there, if he finds fine. any other friends. Just what, bro? What a freak! And if he doesn't do what she wants, that he has a- If you won't do what I say, I'll tell everyone all about what you did. Shit, man. Super freak. She- manipulates him into killing someone and then uses that as blackmail material and now the crazy th in the back of his mind he knows that he always has to listen to her or she always has this over his head 
but at the present, it's almost like since he's had so many years of being forced to listen to her because of this blackmail material, at the current present day, oh fuck, at the current present day, he almost loves her. He almost thinks that he listens to her because he respects her. Dude, what crazy writing is this? She gaslighted him so hard into the point that he thinks he's doing things for himself. This is actual Stockholm Syndrome. Bad person and no one will like him. So he only has hair now and no one else. As no one will like a bad person. And dude, he, he does a, she's doing him a favor. No one will like a bad person. I won't tell anyone, anyone. you have me. She's doing him a favor by being on his side here. And like he is. Her insecurity and possessiveness is too damn toxic. Willing to go to such lengths to possess Andrew. Bro. And his happiness and well-being doesn't really matter to her that much. As if he doesn't belong to her. And then she twists him again. I know you don't like me. No, it's not true. It's not that I don't like you. She is not happy. Therefore, actual manipulative behavior. Oh my God. Or it is not true love as she wants to possess him and and enjoys tormenting and gaslighting him. Having an extremely toxic relationship is as if she has this frustrated tension to him, drawn to him physically, but yet no. Okay, dude, all right, oh God, okay. The morbid aspect of it, yet trying to be inappropriate in a teasing and taunting manner, dismissing her actions as such. Andy knowing what a horrible and his sister is, yet loving care, saying that he has a rotting moldy spot in his heart for her, depicting what toxic relationship they have all dude honestly this is like obviously this is incredibly far-fetched but like there are themes that just hit home listen uh, unfortunately a lot of people have been betrayed i've been betrayed and i've been uh at least people have tried to manipulate me in, in ways that that almost worked okay it just it hurts so much betrayal never comes from a friend I said that wrong. Editor, betrayal never comes from an enemy. That's why it's so rough, bro. Always addressing each other by what they truly are. Both fully knowing that they are horrible people. With Andy being played like a puppet, they make a blood oath for Ashley to keep their secret that they killed Nina, while Andrew promises that he will always be in her company. Fuck. Dude, insane. The gaslighting is insane. It's it's tantalizingly bad. I, I It hurts me to even watch this. She even admits that she wants them all to herself with no one ever being in his life, to which he disagrees, saying there will be others, but she would be his priority. Literal win-win for Lele over here, all right? Lele caused all of this, but he she's convincing him it's his fault, so she won't tell if he's stuck with her forever. Hence why, even with Julia, he made his sister his priority, always leaving early and canceling on her. That's when he's awakened by Ashley, whispering in his ear to kill their parents. Yet again, unsurprisingly at this point, Ashley jumps all over Andrew being inappropriate, but of course Andrew doesn't seem to mind too much. But something with Anna clearly indicates that he knows something like this is wrong, always teasingly insulting her. When she it's crazy. It, it, it's like he knows that he can't actually straight up tell her, I think you're evil, leave me alone. So he has to say it through a teasing way because he needs to get it out. It's like the comedy and the teasing aspects of the thing he's saying are masks and facades trying to downplay the things that he actually needs to get off his chest. He needs to tell her she's crazy, but instead of saying, you are crazy, he'll have to say, ha, you're crazy, in a way that he, he can get it off his chest because it's torturing him and suffocating him, but at the same time, not actually being combative towards her gets too close. Meanwhile, Andrew agrees that the parents should die as the mother would surely snitch on them and expose their location. And he knows they were involved in the- Bro! Let's offer mom and dad to the demon. After she like, you know, bites his ear and like, but does all his things and he's okay. He's again, he is so manipulated. He is under her thumb. He cannot get out, dude. This is like, okay, at least if like someone's under a genjutsu, they're under a genjutsu. This guy is just completely mentally enslaved. Their imprisonment. From the stairs, the mother comes down, not seeing Ashley, knowing Andrew would be sleeping on the couch. She starts explaining that she feels bad and owes him an explanation, but without Ashley. Trying to say something about a situation with Ashley and him. When she notices Ashley holding Andrew when she comes down. Oh, 
Oh, Frank, she was about to spill the beans and she saw her little Satan spawn daughter sitting there. Dude, I am getting some major Avatar The Last Airbender flashbacks. This is just Zuko's family dynamic. The pillow covering is crotch for some reason. Bro, nice pillow coverage, dog. Nice, nice, love that, bro. And it's like, here's the funny thing. He knows he's doing something wrong and she doesn't care. Dude, this is just, uh, she knows that her daughter's crazy, just like how uh, Zuko's mom knew Azula was a psycho. Seemingly knowing that they had a weird past. Hoping it is not what it seems like when Ashley... For the love of God, this better not be what it looks like! <laughs> all of a sudden points the gun at her, or the... Fuck. ...during her to go down to the basement and Andrew to grab the ropes. It seems as a... Grab the ropes. Shit, man, she knows, she knows. If the mother actually likes Andrew and wanted to discuss something with him, there being more to the story and why the parents made the decision to have them imprisoned in the- Right, obviously the parents don't just straight up want to imprison their children. Um, damn it, man, and now you know you can't kill her. You can't kill her, bro. She has so much information. You are living a life of mystery. You don't know anything that's going on the quarantine building some dude and andrew again andrew's gonna end up being the one that's the victim of all of this she's gonna kill her mom feed her feed her to the demon and andrew is again not gonna have closure think about ashley being twisted and sick she seems to dislike ashley as she is quite despicable andrew goes up looking for rope when the father awakens but he tra <laughs> just went into his dad's room for rope makes him to go down when he finds some rope and puts a cleaver knife against his throat oh tying both god. him and the mother to a post oh my god bro they're about to get breaking badded he's about to breaking bad them taking their credit card and the pen coat andrew goes out to check that the coat reverse uno card i'm gonna sell your organs it works meanwhile ashley prepares the ritual to say oh my fucking god She's actually gonna just sacrifice them to a demon just because she- Sacrifice her parents. She explains that she needs to draw some blood from them so that they won't scream. That's when the mother explained- Need to draw blood from them so they don't scream? What? Don't you fucking act like I haven't tried with you, Ashley. That she knew when they killed and buried- I never told anyone. What you two little psychos did to that girl! Bro, she knew. She knew all along. Nina, but she didn't say anything to anyone to protect them. And she is not a bad mother after all. But knowing she and the father put them in the building a few months ago to die, she doesn't want to listen to anything anymore. Getting some blood to draw the circle for the sacrifice. Andrew gets back, confirming the card works when Ashley summons the demon and offers the souls, which... Bro, can you imagine? Can you imagine being in this position? Jesse! We need to summon a demon, Jesse! Jesse! Hey, yo, Mr. White! Add the methylamine! Summon the demon, Jesse! <laughs> what the frick? Dude, he checked if the credit card worked. Yep, credit card works. Okay, summon Satan. Leads to the parents dying. Oh my god, she actually murders her parents. I thought maybe there would be some sort of twist at some point. But no, she just... She just summoned the demon, murdered her parents. Dude, it, it, and they'll never know what she wanted to tell Andrew. To ensure that they are dead. Oh my fucking god. Ashley stabs them, and the duo decide to- Dude, what the fuck? They weren't very good parents, it seems. Well, I mean, look at their daughter. This is like freaking- Honestly, I think that the, uh, the Zuko analogy was kind of awesome. The Zuko analogy was great. To get rid of the evidence by reducing their corpses into parts and dumping them somewhere. They Dude, this is so dark. It's insane. Cut her up into pieces. Hid them places. Dude. And the crazy thing is, on some level, she did love Andrew. and But Andrew's just too blind, too manipulated, too gaslighted to even see that he's doing something awful. They soon take the parts and place them in the fireplace to burn. They cut them into pieces and burn them. Oh my god, dude. Burn them. Meanwhile, having a taste for human flesh, Ashley takes some of their parts and cooks them into- Okay, dude. Alright, dude. Alright. Okay, you, you, you eat one person? Fine. Whatever. Listen. We've all been there. But uh, this is too much! The soup to enjoy them. Having Merry a Christmas, everybody. Twisted sense of justice and empowerment that eating humans gives her some higher meaning. 
that she she's crazy she's just insane i eat humans i'm on the top of the chart what the frick eric cartman would be would be freaking out right now her memories and livelihood ate her own parents as a power move all right so that was the uh the the overarching story for the chapter and then there's a couple of endings oh my god dude there there is so much wrong with this story after being left with some bones and the skulls andrew removes the teeth to prevent them being identified and they head dude they're in their basement okay and to bed so ashley can have another premonition to see if they are in any danger before leaving in her dream she sees a cold and silent andrew kicking open the door behind ashley as if he's intending to what? kill her andrew holding a cleaver knife grabs and drags ashley by the hair saying bro what is this why do they have to make it <laughs> how tired of her nonsense he is killing her she awakens considering if actually killing her in her dream or premonition he actually drags her out and kills her this was a premonition and if because knowing ashley it, she sounds like the type of person that would be into that kind of shit if you know what i'm saying he would actually kill her when andrew gets to her asking if she had a vision to which it denies they then take the remains of the deceased parents and go to the ocean and chuck them far into it they have their normal arguments and disagreements while having a lot of tension between them getting Bru into the car driving far away into another location running away from the authorities and the organization okay what the frick bro dude seeing a clip a scene like this without context and you're just like oh it's so cute and then you know the context and you're like oh oh Oh. ...that imprisoned them, having a lot of cash in hand, with Ashley unsure if... Dude, you just know that the Rule 34 is insane. Andrew will eventually kill her or not, as her manipulations and severe toxic possessiveness almost drives him into the edge of breaking. So it's very clear now, consuming human flesh for Ashley has become a power trip and... <laughs> the creator shipped them before the fans could, oh my god. ...something that she enjoys and tries to justify through her usual nonsense. Andrew, on the other hand, acts like a whiny puppet who enjoys the tension between them. And the parents, despite clearly being condemnable for giving away their children to the evil organization to die in, they knew the twisted eeriness of them and how they killed an innocent child, Nina. To top it all off, okay. Ashley and Andrew seem to be having a demon on their side now who constantly requires human souls. So Whatever. Small price to pay for a demon, are you am I right, guys? Bro, if you could have a demon on your side that gave you incredible powers, like, let's be real here. Let's be just completely honest. Would the price of a couple of human souls a week really not be worth it? I'm just saying. They would a small price for the Mangekyo shotting gun. Need to keep on killing. There are several more endings to the story, which I will explain in an upcoming video. Yeah, so thanks. make sure to stay tuned by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one. Bro, what is even going on? How is this going to have a chapter 3? What are they going to do? W video. Gamers, check the frick out of Gamer Salt. Man did a really good job. This was absolutely insane. Oh my god. All right, well, let me just spoil you just because I've seen like clips of this floating around. There is an alternate story where there's just full out incest. Like full out incest story ending and uh, we will not be watching it right now. Someone actually did it and voice acted the whole incest ending for the story. Uh yeah, this shows th this game's all kind of messed up, but again, internet lore is kind of my bread and butter right now. I am just all for it. Jeebus, Freebus, that was insane. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.